Hello everyone and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Lyndall Stout. OSU scientists will be paying close attention to the Super Bowl this weekend. We'll tell you why a little bit later in the show. But first, we're talking forage options other than wheat that you may want to consider now. Here's Dr. Alex Roccatelli. So last year by September was the time that producers were planning on seed some wheat uh, for forage, but unfortunately we were in a drought condition, so some producers really delayed to put the, the wheat on the ground. And after, with sudden and soon low temperatures, what happened is wheat pastures didn't develop well or even in some cases, producers even give up on placing a wheat pasture. Something now that producers might be wondering is, is there a plan B that I can still uh, produce forage for the spring? And the answer, yes, we have. And that would be spring oats. Uh, producers can plan on planting uh, spring oats from mid-February to early March. Uh, and that can provide like forage for 35 to 60 days depending on the weather. Uh, oats has a similar or even superior quality uh, forage than wheat, so on that end we are going to be good. But expect a little lower yield uh, than wheat. Uh, we are talking about 1,500 pounds of forage to 2,000 pounds, one ton of forage per acre. Um, when uh, plant oats, that's the trick. If you are putting oats in a field that you have fertilized and managed uh, to plant wheat and your wheat field failed, pretty much all the fertilization that you place there is still there, so you may not need to fertilize. In this case, you just go and you can no-till your, your oats. In this case, uh, oats can, can be no-tilled uh, to a deep of 1.5 inches, However, uh, for a fast emergency, we recommend about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch, so it can start to, to grow faster. If you are planning to graze oats, well, you can start uh, grazing oats when the plants reach about six to eight inches, but height is not the only way to check. Uh, it's a good idea that you go there and you try to pull the leaves in the field, when you're trying to pull, mimicking the animal trying to graze, if what comes to your hand is, uh, is the leaves, the leaves detach, but the roots stay in the ground, means that the plant is well anchored and you can start to graze. If in that time it's still uh, you're pulling the plants and the roots are coming out with it, uh, well, better that you delay a little bit to start grazing. Otherwise, you can lose uh, all your oats and it's not going to have any regrowth and stop grazing when those plants are about three inches height. So it still can have some leaves there for photosynthesis and a good regrowth. Now, if you plan going for hay, uh, the best time for hay is when the plants are reaching the boot stage uh, to heading. Because at that moment, we already achieved the half medium point. We have a great and high amount of forage there and the quality is still good for growing animals. So that's the time that you can, go, uh, that you can have a very good uh, yield for hay. So that's pretty much uh, some tips here on oats, but if you want to know more in details, uh, I invite you to, to check our fact sheet and also uh, talk to our educators in, in, your, in our counties. Uh, they are the best resource to help you find the best varieties and uh, more details in the management. <music>